Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today I'm going to be answering viewers question. Viewers question regarding God. Ever since I returned to Christianity, Christian Orthodoxy to be precise, people asked me how to connect to God, how to feel God, how to understand God. What does it mean to surrender to God? God. So, in today's video, I want to clarify this question because I can relate to it very, very well. Before returning to Christianity, I was into New Age, into psychedelics, Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism and whatnot. I can very well relate to that question, even though I grew up somewhat Christian. My parents are from Macedonia, by default, I was Christian Orthodox, I was baptized as a baby, but I never looked into Christian Orthodoxy. Quite the opposite, I turned my back on it and I thought that the wisdom must lay in Buddhism, in Hinduism, in Eastern philosophy, in Terence McKenna, in Alan Watts and whatnot. I was sure that Christianity cannot be the answer. That stuff is too old, that is something from the past. It is here to control the masses. It is all a cult brainwashing, so on and so forth. I even discussed it here on this channel and said, man, if I want to experience mushrooms, I just take some mushrooms. If I want to understand ayahuasca, I just drink some ayahuasca. If I want to understand LSD, I just pop a tap. It is very straightforward. It is very easy to comprehend how to understand God. I was struggling with it. But guys, the answer is pretty easy. From a Christian perspective, we all know what we have to do. We all know what we have to do in order to connect to God. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What does it mean? As Christians, we cannot connect to God without Jesus. It is that simple. And that is something that I was struggling with. Coming from the New Age, coming from Buddhism, Hinduism, I believe that I am God. Man is God and everybody can internalize and actualize God in themselves, within themselves. They can become God in this creation. They can become an enlightened master, just as the Buddha. And even Jesus was an enlightened master. He was not the son of God. He was channeling God. He was becoming God in this creation. He was a kundalini yoga master, right? He was a shaman. That was Jesus and therefore he was just a man and therefore I can do the same thing. The exact same thing is possible for me. Here, little me, Bobby, I can transcend just like Leo from actualized.org. I can transcend and self-actualize and become God. And then I can have a bigger YouTube channel, God's perspective on YouTube. How amazing is that? And you can do it too. Christianity wants from exactly that phenomena. There is only one God and we are not God. We all hold God within us, but that does not mean that we are God. The Holy Spirit can flow through us, but we are not God. Only Jesus is the begotten Son. He is the only begotten Son and we can find our way to the Lord only through him. There is no other way. So now, enough ranting. What does that mean in practical terms? For me, it meant to pray to Jesus, most literally, to do the Jesus prayer. If you do not know the Jesus prayer, the Jesus prayer goes like this. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, what do those words mean? It is about humbling oneself. It is about realizing that you are not God. Who wants to be God? If you take this metaphysical spiritual concept, what you're talking about is your ego. The ego wants to be 
God. You, your true self, has no interest in becoming God because your self wouldn't have that desire if it wasn't for that ego. To connect to Jesus, to understand that the sin is in the flesh, that you truly by default are born a sinner, you will understand how to humble yourself and how to reconnect with God. When you ask for Jesus, when you ask Jesus to forgive your sins, he will appear to you. You will be visited by Jesus. It might be in a dream. It might be in a vision. It might be in your heart. There are many different ways and I know it sounds vague. I fully understand why people critique and disregard Christians because it seems so woo-woo to them. But those are the exact same people that have no issues in doing a 180 and going to Eastern philosophy, going to Buddhism, Hinduism and praying to their guru. No issues with that. But when it comes down to Christianity, out of a sudden they do not see this first hand experience. They cannot grasp it. But let me tell you, just as you can go to a Buddhist temple and meditate and feel it, the same way you can feel Jesus in your heart as well. The same way you can connect to God. By absolute surrender, by absolute trust, by absolute belief and by humbling yourself, by fully understanding that you are a sinner. If you go by the Ten Commandments, have you lied? I'm sure you did. Have you stolen? Most of us have. Even the smallest, tiniest things. Have you lusted for men or for women? Have you had sex with multiple partners? Most of us did. So what does it mean? If you are into the spiritual concepts, you will understand that all of those sins are passions of the flesh. All of those sins are desires of your body. Every time you follow those desires, you're disconnecting from God. God is metaphysical. God is non-physical, the Alpha and the Omega. How can you connect to something non-physical through physicality? The more you get into comfort, the more you get away from God. This is why fasting practices work. This is why asceticism works. Comfort is the enemy of the Lord. Comfort is the enemy of God. Comfort is the enemy of communion and connection to the Lord. Why is that so? Because every time you feel comfortable, you lose that non-physical connection. So again, I went on an epic rant here. How do we connect to God? Through humbling ourselves, through fasting, through reading the scripture, through truly having faith and through truly surrendering to God, which means to understand that you, with your little desires and mind constructs, will never find bliss. You will never find your way home by yourself. You assume that by following your desires, you will accomplish anything in this life that is ludicrous. Where is a creation, there is a creator. It is that simple. Nobody would assume now staring at their phones or at their computers that there is no creator behind those things. Nobody would assume that me, hello, how did I come to this world? With no parents, with no father, with no mother, there is always a creator behind a creation. But out of a sudden, we take the miracle of the Big Bang. Even Terence McKenna said it. Science operates under one premise, grant us one miracle, and we explain the rest. Give us the Big Bang, boom! Nothingness, right? <laughs> Something out of nothing. And now we're gonna explain the rest. That is ridiculous. If you cannot accept that you've been created, you will be running in circles. You will be seeking and looking and striving and you won't find anything. It will be your demise. The only way to true happiness is through the Lord. 
through surrendering to the will of God. And once you surrender to the will of God, you will feel it in your heart. Just as I said, with meditation, you feel it, right? Your mind gets calmer, fine. Through yoga, you feel it, right? You stretch your body. Through cold showers, you feel it as well, right? There are many different practices. But for true peace at heart, you will have to surrender to God and understand that if you do not follow God's path that he laid out to you, you will follow the path of the devil. The devil will be your father and you will follow the passions of the flesh. That is a rat race that you cannot win. You will never be able to satisfy all your desires. And as long as you stay in comfort, you will never be able to connect to your father. So to sum it up, ask Jesus Christ, ask the Lord for forgiveness. Understand truly in your heart that you are a sinner. Understand fully that you've done wrong. Understand fully that you are not as good as you like it to be. Understand fully that you are not an ascendant master. Understand fully that you won't be some actualized being and leading the way into an evolving future. This is not your role here. You are a little human. Accept it. This is what you've been created for. Stop fantasizing. Stop thinking about enlightenment. It is all a scam. How many people on YouTube talk about enlightenment and how many people reached it? Just ask yourself that question. Jed McKenna wrote a beautiful book, Spiritual Enlightenment, The Damnedest Thing. And he describes beautifully how many people are in the business of enlightenment and how many people truly deliver. If enlightenment is your business, shouldn't you have many disciples that are all enlightened? If your business is bodybuilding, how many transformations did you create, right? How many clients did you change? What happened? There. If you cannot deliver, you're not in the right business. You are lying to yourself and to your clients. How many of those gurus deliver real results? I haven't seen any. So many enlightened masters, Osho and all the rest. They're talking about enlightenment, but nobody reaches it. You won't reach enlightenment through watching YouTube videos. Enlightenment is a scam. It is a lie. You will only find peace at heart through the Lord. Humble yourself. Understand that you're nothing but a mere mortal. Understand that the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. This is the only way to repent. All right, guys. But this is it for today. Yet again, a slightly different video. I'm aware most people will hate it. And that is totally all right. Because we are living in the end times where people are against God. They want to follow the doctrines of the devils. They want to follow veganism. And that is A-OK -okay with me. That is what we know will happen. This is what we've been warned of. Anyways, guys, for the people of you that like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, hey, please do so. And if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. If you want raw grass-fed liver, but you cannot stand the taste, Grassland Nutrition has the solution. Grassland Nutrition takes grass-fed organic beef liver raw and freeze-dries it for you. It is a convenient, fantastic way to get the nutrition of liver without the taste. We have Amazon links for you. You can head over there, buy whatever you might want to buy, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. We get a small share. That is a fantastic way to support Bobby's perspective. If you want grass-fed beef delivered to your doorstep, butcher boxes for you. And we have CBD links as well. On top of that, guys, consider supporting Bobby's perspective through Subscribestar or Patreon. We have a VIP community there where we have Skype group calls every single week where we can discuss any topic, no matter if it is health, lifestyle or nutrition related. On top of that, by joining, you straight away receive your comprehensive nutrition guide. It is an ebook that teaches you the basics of nutrition, but goes beyond as well and is catering to your personal goals, no matter if you're keto, primal, 
paleo or even raw. All right, but this is it for today. Thank you very much for your support, guys. May God bless you. And as always, much love and peace.